Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying lockdown as much as you can. Maybe you're reading more or doing something that you never had time for before. I did another workout this morning on the TV with the Les Mills online classes and it was pretty hilarious. It was the combat one and I've never done anything like it before and I've never felt more uncoordinated in my life. But I just thought, just keep moving. <laughs> Doesn't matter if I look like a complete idiot, just keep moving. So I made it through an hour workout. Well done me. All right, today we are gonna talk about puppies barking, how to prevent your puppies from barking. I had a few uh, comments from people that I wanted to address and I see I've got a few more that I can go through as well. So the first person who had written in about their dog barking was Sharon and she has a 10 year old Chihuahua who barks when people drive past the windows. And then the next person was Terry who has a puppy and he barks at people walking past the windows. So I wanted to talk about both of those. The, the technique I'm going to recommend for you is teaching your dog to go to their mat. And the reason I love this command is because it gives your dog an option. So with all of my training, I like to give dogs the option to get it right instead of just punishing them for getting it wrong or just getting really frustrated when they get it wrong because dogs bark it's the way they communicate and i'm more fond of giving them another option rather than trying to teach them not ever to make noise because i don't really think that's fair but i also don't want your dog barking so much that it just does your head in so we're going to work today on teaching your dog to go to their mat. This command will be easier for Terry's puppy to understand because he hasn't had as much time practicing barking at people um, as the Chihuahua has. I'm not sure if the Chihuahua just moved to the new house where she's barking at the windows or whether she's had 10 years of barking at the windows when people drive past. It's going to work. It's just the process to get the Chihuahua on board will take a little bit longer than to get the puppy on board. So the first thing with the on your mat command, when I'm finished here, I'm going to post the link to my blog, which has step by step instructions. And with all positive reinforcement training, it starts out really easy. And then you gradually work until it's harder and harder and harder. And you get the dog performing that command under more difficult circumstances. Now the second thing we're going to do is we need to make their mat or their bed a really great place for them to go. So I want you to load it up with heaps of different toys, preferably ones that they can get into their mouth and that they enjoy having in their mouth because A, they'll get more reinforcement because you're playing with them with their toys on their mat, which is going to make it really, really awesome for them. And B, they're going to have something in their mouth, which is going to prevent them from barking or at least from doing a full bark, which is really, really loud in some cases. So make sure the toys are just really fun and that you engage your dog with play. It's easy to engage a puppy with play. Sometimes when dogs get a bit older, we just kind of leave them <laughs> to do their own thing. And all dogs love to play. So I want you to work on that. Then we're going to practice from you being in different parts of the house and from you being in different positions. So like I said before, we start off really easy. You're going to be in the room. You're going to be training that command on your mat, on your mat. And then you're going to do it from different positions. So do it when you're standing at the counter preparing dinner or do it when you're sitting at your desk or do it when you're in a different room. Or if you want to get really fancy, if you and the dog are both out in the garden, you can ask them to go to their mat and you're outside and they're inside. So there are heaps of different ways to make it more and more challenging for your dog before we introduce real life distractions. And the next step is to introduce the real life distractions. 
So Terry, you might have a neighbor who lives nearby and you could set them up to walk past at a certain time of day so that you are prepared, you know what time they're coming past and you're prepared to teach or to remind your dog where they need to go. And Sharon, you could also potentially set up a neighbor to drive past at a certain time of day. And initially, probably what's going to happen is the dog is going to see the person drive or walk past and they're going to run to the window and start barking because that is what they have always done. But you are going to tell them to go to their mat and they might not hear you at first because they'll just be so wired that somebody's going past their house. So they may not understand right away. So if that is the case, go and get them and put them on their mat and just remind them of how fun it is to be on their mat. Just expect a little bit of going backwards before we get to go forwards with this one because they've just had so much time running to the windows and barking at the windows. And then maybe set up some more practice runs with at a few more different times throughout the day so that you can really start working on that command with real life distractions. Uh, now I just want to say it's not going to stop them from doing it if you're not at home. It, well, it might, but it probably won't. If they are able to run to the window and bark at somebody and there's nobody there to remind them of what they should be doing, then they're probably just going to go and run and bark at the window. So if that's the case, I really like to get the dog out of the situation completely. As humans, you know, we love to sit at the window and watch the world go by and that can be really relaxing for us. But for some dogs that can actually be really stressful. They might feel like they need to guard the house. They might feel a little bit anxious about the fact that they're the only one there protecting the house or the family. Uh, and, and that can be really stressful. So with the Chihuahua and the puppy, if you're not there and able to actively manage the situation, I would be putting them into a playpen or in a quiet room of the house where they just can't see the world going by. And you can put some nice soothing music on or leave the radio on, but just get them out of the situation. So again, just with all of my training, I want to set them up for success. I want to give them an option of something that they can do rather than expecting them to understand what you want them to do. So I hope that makes sense. It's not a quick fix. It is a process, but all dog training is a process. And anybody who tries to sell you a quick fix is probably going to do something really horrible to your dog. So we don't want to do that. We just want to teach our dogs to act in a way that we find appropriate and in a way that they still get to feel like dogs. Now, I did see a couple of other questions come in. So Bev. Bev has just started taking Mishka for a walk. She's 11 weeks old. And as people approach, she stops and barks, not for long, just like, what are you? <laughs> okay, and normally Bev would let somebody approach her puppy, but obviously she can't at the moment with the social distancing. So Bev, that, that you've pretty much nailed it. She just doesn't know what they are and she doesn't know what to do with them. And Normally, I would also really encourage you to let that person approach or let the puppy, let Mishka approach them. We don't want to put our puppies in situations where they get freaked out. And oftentimes people, you know, they see a puppy and they're like, ah, and they come running up and they've got high pitched voices and they loom over their puppy, over the puppy. And that's pretty scary for a lot of puppies. So I really like people to be able to just stay still and let the puppy approach them. But obviously that's not an issue right now, or it's not an option right now. So what I would do is I would give Mishka another option. So I would allow her to, or I'd ask her to sit and just let her just sit and watch the situation. You could also practice the watch command. So get her to watch you. You could also sprinkle some kibble on the ground so that she's busy uh, looking down and picking up kibble while somebody is walking past. So she gets used to the sound of somebody walking past, the smell and the sensation, but she's also being rewarded 
for just letting them go past without without barking. So there's a few different options there. I hope I've helped you out with that. Um, it is hard. It's going to be really hard for all of your puppies to get used to life outside. And we just, I've said it before, we might not have the life of the party puppies um, after this COVID-19 lockdown. They might not want to meet everybody. They might be unsure. When we do get out, I do really want you to work on their socialization as much as possible. So your puppies need to be meeting people of all different shapes and sizes, people with loud voices, people with beards, people with umbrellas, people in wheelchairs and on skateboards. And depending on how old they are, they may never learn to enjoy it, but we would at least like to get them to the point where they don't mind too much. All right, now Sunshine wrote in our little mini schnauzer low chin barks at every person or dog who passes the fence. We are getting a little griffin in six weeks and I don't want her to teach him bad habits. Cute, <laughs> very cute dogs. And yes, uh, your, your schnauzer will absolutely teach your puppy bad habits. Um, it's that pack mentality. If one dog is barking, it's very unusual for another dog to not bark. Uh, same with howling. As soon as one dog starts howling, everybody starts howling. So, mini schnauzer in the garden. Is it possible, Sunshine, to move the dog away from the fence? It's kind of like what I said before about letting them look out the window if they find that really stressful because they have to guard or they feel like they have to guard i mean obviously we know they don't have to guard but your dog thinks she does is it possible to just move her um sorry is she a girl or a boy yeah she's a girl is it possible to just remove her from the yard when you're not supervising i hope that's an option and then when you are supervising teach her to go somewhere else. So you can do the exact same command on your mat or on your bed and just make an outside version and just teach her before there's any distractions, teach her what she's supposed to do, really reinforce her for being in the right place and for doing the right thing and then use the real world distractions. And again, just expect to go backwards before we go forwards with this. Um, you can also teach her to do something else when she's in the garden. So you could teach her fetch, you could teach her to find things, you could just teach her ways to be busy out there without being really wired for every single person that, that comes past because it can be really stressful. So I hope that I have managed to help you guys out with that. I don't see any more questions. I will post the instructions, the step-by-step -step instructions for on your mat. And of course, you can send them to wherever you want. It doesn't have to be a mat. It could be a bed. It could be a blanket. It could be a certain spot on the ground. You guys can get really creative with this. And when you're teaching the command, you can use whatever words you want as well. Just make sure it's really consistent and that everybody is saying the same thing. So when I was training my dog, Amelia, instead of saying on your mat, which would have been a lot easier, what was the sentence? I said something like, go to your mat. But she understood it. It was quite a mouthful, <laughs> it was quite a mouthful for me and for other people who were trying to train her, but she did understand it. So they can understand some pretty long sentences. But if you can keep it simple, keep it simple. Now, just a reminder that I have done two masterclasses this week and I have two more coming up next week. So when I get off here, I will also post the link so that you can save your seat in the masterclasses coming up next week. The masterclass is called How to Raise a Well-Behaved Dog. And during the masterclass, I give you the foundation that you need to get you on the same page as your puppy. Because oftentimes puppies are just being puppies, but we expect so much from them and that causes a lot of frustration. So I like to teach people how to see the world from their puppy's perspective and how to set them up for success. Because if you can teach them what they should be doing, prevent them from getting it wrong, and if you understand what they're thinking, 
then it just makes the whole integration much easier and it just means that you can get on with all of the fun stuff about being a puppy parent and put all that chaos, noise, sleeplessness, potty training, put all that stuff behind you and just move on and have a beautiful existence with your beautiful puppies. So if you are finding puppy parenting a bit challenging, if you do have some specific challenges that you're facing, then please click the link, save your seat and come and join me on the masterclass next week. I've got two more, one on Tuesday and one on Wednesday. They're both at 11.30 a.m. New Zealand time and I would love to see you there. So thanks a lot for joining me today, you guys. Please continue to post your questions. I am loving the vibe inside the Puppy Raising with Pet School Facebook group. You guys are just so delightful and thank you so much for sharing your puppy photos with me. I am loving them. As a lot of you know, I don't have a dog with me at the moment. My own dog died last year and I normally have my clients dogs around me, but due to COVID-19, I don't have any of them. So things are getting pretty desperate. We have adopted a stick insect, some earwigs and now a mouse that one of the cats brought in. So that's how desperate I am <laughs> for animal attention. So thank you for continuing to share your beautiful puppy photos with me. All right, you guys, take care. I'll see you next week.